Aaron is, is Miles Morales' uh, uncle, uh, brother to his father, Jefferson. Um, Aaron, there's some tension between uh, Jefferson and Aaron, uh, but uh, Uncle Aaron serves as sort of this mentor, this sort of grounding force for Miles, the voice that understands him when no one else really does, uh, the shoulder to lean on, the one who, the hip uncle who kind of break down the birds and, bee, and the bees with you on another level, that guy, you know. Um, so it was a real, a real joy playing that and getting to connect with Shamik, um, who plays Miles Morales um, on, that, on that part. With Uncle Aaron and Miles, I think there's a connection there that he can't quite, that Miles can't quite have with his father. So I think that they really connect on music. I think they, they, they connect on street art, sneaker culture. There's a, there's a sort of a, a video game relationship with, that they have as well. I think the, all, the, all the cool things that, uh, that, that Miles can't necessarily experience with his dad. His dad is really important because his dad is loving, his dad is a disciplinarian, his dad is a, a, a real voice of reason. But there's, there's things where that, that Miles' parents can't quite cover. And I think Miles is, uh, excuse me, Uncle Aaron is that, is that voice, that, that person who sort of fills that gap, that void, um, because they really do connect really organically and have really similar interests. And I think he just takes a lot of pressure off, off of Miles. Um, Miles is a kid who, who is high achieving, but also has um, high expectations of himself, of himself, and his parents do as well, have really high expectations of him, and are really trying, trying to push him to be, in a healthy way, but trying to push him to be a successful, well-rounded person. And sometimes it's a bit much for Miles. And so Aaron is the one who sort of lets a little little air out of the balloon for him. Um, and, and, it, and it works, it works for him. I just think that it's, it's, it's a wonderful ride that addresses things that I think speak to all of us at whatever age you're at, you know, as far as really coming to terms with, with who you are and the responsibilities associated with who you are and embracing Embracing your identity, embracing, embracing, embracing your capacity, um, and and taking that seriously, but also enjoying yourself along the way. Um, and then the family element is is just really beautiful because it's a it's a whole, complete, loving family, not without its is not without its issues and 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 sort of complicated family dynamics that definitely exist in that. But that's also very relatable because so many of us have some, some somewhat complicated families or something in them that is complicated and and uh, but these are people who are working towards something really positive and so I think that the, that the film is a perfect fit in terms of uh, families going to to see it and, 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 and really enjoying the story. This film is important um, on many levels. Um, one, uh, just to see this this middle class family in Brooklyn, and this kid goes to this academy. Like I know those, I know people like that. Like that, those people don't get stories in in the, that that sort of middle class um, experience. Um, it's really important for people to be able to see that character as well. Um, and obviously him being uh, uh, Puerto Rican and black, I think that, that that message and the way in which it's, it's, it's packaged and put together is, is very timely, very positive and very relevant um, and very real for a lot of people. Um, and I just think, you know, growing up as a kid, um, I'm so happy that my child gets to live in a time where there are there are more diverse voices and 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 the the pictures of our culture are on their way to lining up with the world we live in you know where we're having a very similar experience i think that we're not there 
but I think that we're moving towards being able to sit in a theater or turn on a TV and what we're watching is is slowly becoming a a, a more accurate reflection of the changing world that we live in. And there will always, always be a certain degree of pressure on the entertainment industry because the world is always gonna continue to be changing and morphing and developing. And so what, how we picture that world, how we create pictures of that world is gonna, is gonna continue to have to, we're gonna have to be very conscious of that. And, um, and I think that this is a, this is a, terrific, uh, a terrific offering, a terrific take um, on, on a very specific, specific world with real cultural re uh, uh, references um, and it's done so well and, and done so respectfully and positively and dynamically so I'm excited for people to see this. Miles you know sort of shares that he, he there's this girl that he likes and and Uncle Aaron sort of checks in and, and is trying to gauge where he's at with girls at this point, like being 13 and, you know, being in puberty um, and just assuming that he doesn't know how to have a conversation with a girl or to introduce himself with a girl. And, and he sh sort of like gives him a little, a little pointer, a couple of pointers on, 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 on how to uh, approach a young lady, which uh, I don't want to spoil how that turns out, but you know, Miles definitely needs, needs some practice. <laughs> Humor is timeless. Humor, humor. Um, uh, I, I think it goes it goes beyond age. I think there's always a, a, a way in which humor can can really sort of penetrate the heart and the mind. And I think that I think they they did just a, a remarkable job with this of of hitting some of the deeper elements that you always need to have in these type of stories. But then then also there's a buoyancy to it. There's a there's a levity to to the piece that that it, it always pops back up and it's always, it always turns to, it always has a moment that, where there's this little burst of laughter, you know, um, and, it's, and it's done so well and it's done consistently. Uh, it carries throughout the, the, the story in its entirety. Um, and so I, I think it's depending on whether you're a parent and watching this film or, or, uh, or, or a child or someone in between who, who's just going to see the, just going to see the film. I think that there's something there for everyone and it's all very relatable, which is really difficult to do. And uh, they did a wonderful job. Hey guys, here's today's daily fact. Now, there will be blood disrupted shooting for No Country for Old Men. In 2007, they filmed in the same area of Marfa, Texas, which created issues when a pyrotechnical test for There Will Be Blood created a huge smoke cloud that got into the shop for No Country for Old Men. Joel and Ethan Cohen had to wait for it to dissipate before they could get back to shooting. Now, remember to click here below to subscribe for more great content and on the side for another video.